All right, guys, welcome aboard. So since my last flight um, that I did in the uh, DA-62 was from uh, Hartford, Connecticut over to uh, Trent, New Jersey, I thought, what the heck, I'm going to just keep going west and do small hops. So I figured we'll just go all the way to the west coast and just pick random airports and uh, jump in uh, jump in the plane and, and see where see where it takes us see if we can get to the west coast here without killing ourselves now if you watched my prior video that I did from Hartford to New Jersey there was a there was a front that was coming through Trenton and uh, we just managed to get in before the rain and then we did a little tour of the airport here so check that out take a look at the end of that video uh, this is a freeware airport that uh, somebody did lots of good stuff at it let's jump in the plane get her fired up over here and get on our way now where we're gonna be going is uh, Johnstown K J S T and I don't even know what state that's in so I'm gonna go ahead and look it up over here K J S T Airport is where is this? This is in Pennsylvania, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So that's where we're heading. Let's uh, let's get fired up and get on our way. So get our position light switch on. We'll turn our electrical master on. Come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down all the noise in the cockpit here. Just a little bit of engine power for startup. Let's get our uh, get our fuel on and get our engines fired up over here so fuel pumps on masters on let's fire up the uh, right clear fire up the left when nobody's standing there all right let's make sure everything else is on here alternators are on let's get our taxi lights on and let's get our master avionics on i'll let that fire up here and let's go ahead and just quickly pop in here and let's just go direct Johnstown so we're gonna delete this uh, let's see how do we delete it delete 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 I don't want to yeah, clear it there we go no flight plan I don't want the flight plan we're gonna go direct and come up here there we go K J Where's J? There it is. Uh, what was it? J S T S T. There we go. Uh, Johnstown. That's it. Hit enter. Let's activate it, and that's where we're going. And I guess we can tune in our uh, ATIS here. So let's just get the winds really quick. Uh, just looking real world, uh, 130 at 4. I'm going to pull up my, uh, my approach chart, or my airport chart. And let's, uh, let's tune in the ATIS, which is 126.775. I think I already have that in there. Yes, I do. Good. Trenton Mercer Information Whiskey. 20 hundred Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 11,000 few, temperature 0, dew point minus 8. Altimeter 3039. Arriving runway 06, departing run. Alright. Well, I guess we should have heard the uh, departing Trenton runway. Trenton Mercer Information Whiskey. 20 hundred Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 11,000 few, temperature 0, dew point minus 8. Altimeter 3039. Arriving runway 06, departing runway 06. Advise on initial contact. Right, you 06 have 06 it is, so we're going to be going a little bit down to the other end of the runway. Uh, let's see, we're here. And we got to go all the way down to 06, which is down here. So there's a little bit of taxiing involved here. We're going to turn around, cut across this way, come down this way for uh, 06. Go ahead and zoom that in. Zoom in even more. Oh, yeah, we can. Cool. And we're going to take a left out of here. 
try not to hit the uh, trucks. Fuel pumps can come off. Parking brake off. Watch the wing tip there. I'll enjoy this uh, nice freeware scenery. <clears throat> As we uh, taxi on out. I do have it set for uh, real time, I think. No, actually I don't. It's actually pretty dark out there, but we're gonna we're gonna keep the sun up here just so we can uh, see what there is. Looks like it's a sunset. I'm gonna bring the sun up just a little bit more. All right, let's see. Um, where are we going? We're gonna take a right, right? Uh, no, actually we're taking we're taking a left. You can tell I planned this out. All right, set our flaps for takeoff. Come down here, set our uh, trim for takeoff. We got a chopper in front of us here. I think we're going to take the runway, yeah, right here. Alright, so we'll take off out of here and then uh, turn to our course, which uh, should just be a right turn slightly, I think. You know, this is runway 24. Oh, <laughs> we're taking off the wrong direction. Oh well. The winds look pretty, uh, pretty light anyway. And just looking at this. Alright, it looks like it's clear here. Clear down the runway, let's get out of here. Power up, get our uh, strobes on, landing lights on. Yeah, there's almost no wind. So, runway of our choice. Alright, there's 80, let's rotate. Do a flyby. Gear up. Let's make our turn over to our heading westerly. Looks like uh, can't quite tell on here. What is that? Two eight four. There you go. Flaps up. Let's power back to 90%. Get retrimmed. And let's head over to Pennsylvania. Goodbye, New Jersey. Very nice airport. I'll put the uh, link to the uh, to the actual airport from the. Uh, the forums, so you can download it yourself. And let's get trimmed up here. Let's, uh, let's zoom out our range here a little bit. There we go. Okay, landing light can come off, taxi light off. Let's get some more music going. Head hit autopilot. I don't even know what altitude we're going to go at. Let's uh, let's see the the uh, the weather along the route. Let's take a look at it here. I'll, what I'll do is I'll go to uh, heading hold right now, and my heading. There's my heading hold. And at altitude, we're 
We've got 7,000 right now, but let me go ahead and bring up the uh, chart. There we go. And there's our flight. And let's take a look at some of the observations along the route here. So we've got uh, a few 12,000, scattered 7, overcast 11, uh, broken 7, another broken, looks like 65, broken 7, 6,000 scattered. I think we're going to go to 6,500 it looks like. So uh, let's go ahead and change our altitude. 6,000. 500. Alright, that looks good. And we got 179 miles to go. Should be a pretty quick flight. Let's see if we get... Uh, where's our flight plan? There we go. Flight plan. I'm sure we can bring other stuff over here that will give us a little bit more details on our uh, flight. Let's take a look at map. We don't need airways. Next red. Put that on. I don't know if it works, but uh, put it on. And I'm guessing flight plan. There we go. Here's our flight plan. I don't know if we have to activate it. we're going direct activate yes enter how do I activate it I go there and hit that no and hit enter I want it to get, well, it's giving us our ETA right there, so all right, I'll buy that. That's all I was looking for, for ETE. Okay, an hour and a half. Uh, that should uh, increase once we actually speed up, I think. Let's take a look out here at the weather. I think I am going to bring the sun up a little bit, just because uh, well, it makes for better scenery viewing. Uh, daytime daytime view out here and you can see where my ortho ends and default scenery starts I don't think I have any uh, ortho through the rest so we're going to see what the default scenery looks like through Pennsylvania sorry I had the, had the <coughs> Excuse me, allergies are driving me bananas today. Sorry, I had the chart up there. I didn't realize I had that up. Alright, looks like we're leveling off at 6,500. We'll keep a high speed cruise here. I'm gonna get that to like 90. There's 89, there's 90. Plenty of fuel. And you can see our time over here is coming down. Estimated, estimated time and route. Once we speed up, we'll uh, we'll see what we get here. We got a little bit of a, a little bit of a headwind there. Nine knots. See already. Let me turn down the uh, engine volume there. I'll pop outside. Got some 
some clouds down below us. Alright, we're off to Pennsylvania. Looks like flight time is going to be an hour or so. If you're not into looking at generic scenery, you can probably fast forward at this point. Maybe we can play Unable around with my view views ID. here. Unable to find view ID 12. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up a couple extra views here. So there's one I want to do. Kind of a rear seat view. Rear seat. Oops, I mean, that's not what I want to do. Cancel that. Gonna insert a new one. There we go. Uh, I guess I, we're just gonna call that pilot again. And I guess it did save it. Pilot save. Uh, we're gonna Added add camera one. Add to category cockpit. We're gonna call this one rear seat. And we're gonna move it backwards. Take a look around. I guess that's about the rear seat view. go up a little bit. Sort of in the dash here. A little bit forward. Something like that. Find my view ID. Now, when I set up my uh, when I set up my views, I mapped the numbers kind of weird, so I have to have a cheat sheet. <coughs> yeah, let's see. Well, the one I usually use for this is my plus key on my uh, on my keyboard. You know, on the number pad, and that one, <coughs> that one is mapped to view ID 13. All right, so if I save that, we should be able to jump into the pilot view and then go over to that view. Perfect. And then there's one other view I want to do. Unable to find view that ID one right the there. All right, so we're going to add Added another one. 11 to category cockpit. I'm going to call this one uh, wheel. All right, now we'll call it uh, front gear. Front gear view. All right, so hopefully this doesn't get too loud. We're going to go down outside of the airplane here, right through the pilot seat, literally. Right there. Ooh, so we got a wind shift there. Go back a little bit. Something like that. Alright, that one I have mapped to my asterisk, which in my sim is U ID 15. Save that. Let's see if this works. Oop, one, one. There we go. Yep. Perfect. Let's see, what else am I going to do? Uh, kind of an interesting flight like this. Alright, we mapped a couple of views. Let me see. Unable to find that view ID 12. I'm just checking my default views. I try to have the same view in all of my airplanes, um, but obviously in a GA airplane, you know, you're not going to have the exact views. Um, so, for instance, I have my pilot view, then my left side, kind of forward, and then the left side, and then looking back, 
Um, and normally I would do like an overwing and then a back seat, like in an airliner, I would have the pilot view to, to the side. Then I would have one that looks back at the engine um, and then one over the wing and then one looking sort of forward, not looking backwards, but sitting in the back of the plane looking forward. Um, but it's a little bit different here on GA. So map slightly differently. And that's why sometimes when you hear me hit a key that doesn't have a view, like, uh, I'm able to find UID 12. like that is <laughs> because there's no view. Because uh, in the airliner, I kind of have this one set up as a sort of jump seat, I think. And then I have one that's off to the side, sort of like in the back of the pilot, looking off into the cockpit. That's what unable to find view ID twelve. That's what that one normally is. All right, I think we're done with views. Let's take a look. Oh, I have a nose view. Yep, <coughs> no, nose view is there. Okay. Unable to find view ID five. That's you. Normally, that's my upper panel, which I guess I could set. I guess I could set. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna set that. I'm gonna set an upper panel that looks up at the lighting. So I'm going to insert Added camera 12 to category cockpit. And I'm going to do upper panel. And it is view ID 12. And basically it's this. At least for this one. Right there. So I can play with the lights. Alright. Save that. Hopefully that's 12. So I'll go there. Unable to find view ID 5. I don't know what it said. <laughs> it's not 12. Oops. It is uh, 5. I'm an idiot. Which is my 5 key. Uh, so here's a tip. So when you're mapping these keys, um, the view IDs are mapped within the sim here. So if you take a look at this uh, keyboard, okay. We do X camera. Yep, X. Let's just do view. I think view will bring them up. Okay, so here you go. So here's my X camera. It's under SRS. And so there's an ID, right? So for instance, each one of these IDs, unfortunately, I did not map to the number pad. <laughs> so like view ID one is my map to my number pad number seven. Say so this, I should probably fix that at some point, but I've gotten so used to the way my setup is that I, I just leave it that way. But you got to keep track of what, you know, if you want your, say your forward view, like my pilot seat view is number eight, right? So I got to know it's not mapped to number eight. It's actually mapped to number two, <laughs> kind of hokey. Like I should probably go back in here and actually map it to eight instead of something else. But uh, just the way my setup is. But if you're if you're starting from scratch, it's a good idea to map the actual number keys to the view IDs to X camera, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so we're gonna do where's my not my pilot view. We're gonna do my upper panel. It's not twelve. It's actually five save that and click out of it looks like we had some update or something yep Ooh, that was kind of freaky Did we get blown off course or something all right anyway and then five perfect there we go so i can turn my lights on and then i got a lower panel which i'm going to go ahead and map also added camera 13 to category cockpit which normally in an airliner is like my center panel um you know the the aisle, it pedis, pedestal, whatever you want to call it, or panel. And this one is going to be right here. And that, in my hokey setup, is key number two, which is view ID six. Not eight, six. Alright, save that. Exit. So now, perfect. I can go to my upper panel, lower panel. So that was kind of weird. Oh, now we. I think we had a wind shift. You know what? I hit. I hit heading hold. 
and that's why we're off. I thought for a second, we're getting wind shifts as the, the weather updates and stuff. And uh, that's why the plane was rocking around there a little bit. I got so tied up with uh, taking a look at the uh, setting up the views, I didn't realize uh, oh, we never went to nav hold here. So I'm just going to go direct here. It's going to get back on our course a little bit. Let's wait for that needle to come back in, and then we'll switch over to nav. And we got 54 minutes. 54 minutes left here. Hopefully, we don't get a and we got a headwind, unfortunately, 13 knots. And I see some of the clouds that were reported along the route right at 6,500, 7,000 feet. All right, let's see, we got a backseat view or jump seat, whatever you want to call it. There's looks like another update right there. I guess that's it. I guess I could do an exterior view, but I want to keep everything sort of the same. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, and then under the wing there so we can watch the gear come down. Or under the fuselage. So pretty generic looking scenery so far. I mean, I guess it's it's okay when you're like in an area like this where there's not a lot of terrain and stuff like that. But uh, where I generally fly on the in the southwest, you know, there's all the mountains and deserts and everything, and it definitely I think improves. And there's a bigger impact visually. Yeah, I like that view because then you got you can view you can see kind of out the window a little bit too. All right, let's bring up Abbey Tab and see where we're at. Um, we're gonna go to maps and we're gonna use the default street map here. zoom out a bit because I don't have a uh, sectional charts for all over the country all right Harrisburg are we gonna be going yeah we're gonna go by ten what do we got um, 166 miles to go I think here's Johnstown is that it Yeah, Johnstown right there. So that's where we're going. Just past uh, Altoona. S-Town. <laughs> and it cuts it off right there. But you can see kind of where we're at. We'll see what the scenery is like over here. I mean, this, uh, the, whatever, this upper Appalachians here. It might actually look pretty decent if we do some, uh, some ortho. So maybe, uh, next time around, after the next flight out of Johnstown, I'll get some ortho and, uh, put that through the, uh, the rest of the route. Wherever we're gonna end up, I have no idea. We're just, we're just making our way westward here, hop by hop. Like uh, ever so slowly, we're getting our needle in. Turn a few more degrees on the uh, heading hold there. Let's see if we can't bring it in a little bit more. Let's see what airport that is. 
red ink. Or, yeah, red ink, right? <coughs> the street map is okay for looking at, like, uh, sort of where you're at, but it it's not perfect for spotting airports here. You know, it doesn't tell you too much other than uh, that's it. So, uh, Reading, or I'm not even sure what, the, what that airport's called. Well, that's it right there. I'm just going by the uh, the largest, the largest uh, town here. Harrisburg, and then yeah, we're gonna go right, pretty much right over the top of Harrisburg, heading for Johnstown here. Nice view of the cloud deck right there. And needles coming in. We'll wait till it gets a little bit closer, and then go to nav, and then, uh, then we can really uh, putz around. can we do? Set up our views. I guess we can play with the clouds a little bit. Let's take a look at this. I don't remember what I had it set for. Uh, 95, yeah. Brighten them up a little bit. Uh, I got our auto mist, auto visibility mist on off. This may screw up my weather, so... Which it did. <laughs> right there, see? Unfortunately, it's kind of a quirk of ultra weather here. Um, if you don't have this on, what happens is um, it doesn't save the settings in here. It seems to save it, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, it's kind of weird. But what I found was that uh, what happens is uh, if I have it off like it just had it right there and I just turn it back on, it drops my weather injection, um, which is a little weird. And I can turn it off and then play around with the visibility a little bit and try to get it a little bit better. Um, but now we're kind of back to default weather. Um, so what I got to do is I got to bring up my FS Global Real Weather again, start it and stop it, and then have it inject again. So let me exit out of that. I'll actually show you what how that works. All right, so here it is. I just brought it up on my other screen. Uh, FS Global Real Weather. There it is. And what I got to do in order to refresh the weather, because this is trying to inject weather into the sim, and it will, I think, like in five minutes or something like that. But in order to do it again, I got to hit Stop Operation, Download Dynamic Weather again. I let that download which unfortunately takes a few minutes. All right, and while we're doing that, we're back on our uh, we're back on our course here. Or we're uh, kind of crossed over it, so I'm gonna just quickly hit nav. I'll let that uh, turn us out while the weather downloads again. Actually, we should probably leave it like this since we don't have that headwind. Right. Let me get that over so you can see. No headwind. <laughs> Got a crosswind, uh, one knot headwind. So, uh, in fake weather, canned weather, but I want real world weather here. So, watch that download. Then we'll have another jolt in the plane once we, uh, once we enable it. The one weird thing is, you can see we're kind of bouncing around a little bit. It seems like the weather on here doesn't, uh, it doesn't put in a lot of turbulence and stuff. It's almost constantly smooth, which is weird. 
I'm gonna see before once it finishes downloading here I'm gonna see if we can go to settings before we inject the weather and see if there's some setting within uh, FS global real world real world weather I can't say that I thought there was a setting in there for like uh, setting the intensity of the uh, turbulence because I like to have some turbulence you know I don't want to just have perfectly smooth. I don't think I've ever flown a real airplane where it was absolutely 100% perfectly smooth, except for one flight. I remember that. And it was like in the evening, dead calm, and I flew around San Diego, and actually I took my mother up for a flight, believe it or not. It was, it was like perfect. The God smiled on my mother's uh, flight. She was the first time ever flying with me, and it was perfect weather. Nice and smooth all around. San Diego. Yes, the, the co-pilot behind me there, he likes it. Alright, weather's almost downloaded here, and then we're going to go into tools. Let me see. It's getting there. Okay, there we go. So, what happens is, bring this down so you can see it. So if I go to tools, no, I can't, I gotta stop it and download it again. I don't want to do that. Well, whatever, I'm gonna do it. I'll hit cancel. This is a little scenic flight anyway. Um, all right, so now I can access tools. Let me bring that down so you can see it again. All right, go to tools, settings, x-plane. Here we go, turbulent strength. I'm gonna turn that all the way up. Um, so basically it just tells it, this is where you set up, where, you know, injecting into X-Plane, here's the path to X-Plane, uh, just generic IP address, um, and your refresh rate, which I have it set for every five minutes, but turbulence strength, add it down, I'm going to turn it all the way up, I'm going to save it, okay, and then... All right, and then we're going to download again. So dynamic weather download. We're going to do most current. We're going to hit continue. And I'm going to take it off the screen so we don't have to watch that download again. Let's, uh, let's pop in the plane here. Actually, let's see. Yeah, see there you can see you get a little wobbliness, you get a little turbulence. That's more realistic. Weather engine is downloaded. I guess maybe because I just downloaded it, so it already had it. Okay, I'm gonna hit uh, start weather transfer, and you're gonna see it change here in the sim. We're probably gonna get bounced around as the you know wind changes and whatnot. Let's see what happens with the turbulence. takes a minute or two for that to happen and once you click uh, start transfer what it's doing is it actually goes into the sim there it goes and it uh, it actually resets the weather so if you went into the weather menu um, it sets it to read the weather from the, the raw file or whatever you know the weather download file that it that it takes and the weather updates. So now we're back to real world weather. And we'll see how our turbulence, again, it's nice and smooth. I cranked it all the way up. We'll see what happens. But uh, let me bring this up again so you can see what, what it looks like after it injects. So here it is. Um, and it gives you the closest airport, which in this case is Fort Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. It gives you the observation, and then it kind of decodes it here for you. And then it has the upper, upper air data um, at different elevations. It looks like, yep, all the way up across up to 51,000 feet or something like that. 
And then you can always uh, review weather situation. You can actually go... I haven't tried this flight planner. I don't know what that does. And I haven't tried refresh. I think that just forces a refresh. Not that I want to do that. Um, but you can you can take a look if you click on that, and then you can type in pretty much anything. So K San Diego, and uh, and there's the current weather that it has that it would put into the sim. Um, let me see where are we going? We're going to Johnstown, which is J S T Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, there we go. Um, so it's got some pretty windy winds. 06013 gusting 18 unrestricted viz. No significant clouds, I'm assuming that's what that means. NSC, I don't I don't think I've ever seen NSC before other than when I was looking at when I you know, outside of this uh, utility. I don't know, it kind of decodes it weird. No no significant clouds is what I'm guessing that means. And, even though uh, it does give you overcast at whatever that is. It's kind of small for me to read. 20 some odd thousand feet here. Alright, let me go back to nearest. Let's get that off of the screen. And let's go back into ultra weather now. Oh, it didn't do it again, did it? It did it again. Just lost my weather just by going into it because I have that off. That's annoying as all hell. Alright, I'm going to leave it on. And... You know what, I'm, just, I'm actually going to check. Let me check my weather here. No, it says it's still going from the raw file. Alright, I'm going to leave it alone. Maybe it was just something weird happening. Maybe it was just updating. It did do it right when I clicked that though, which is weird. Um, this utility, or plug-in, the Ultra Weather, uh, it is payware, and it's nice because you get all kinds of different clouds and things and sky colors you can set. And, um, I kind of like the light power part of it, um, but it's a little quirky in the way it works with this mist, and sometimes I don't like how misty it is. Uh, but you can see I have it turned off and I have it all the way to zero. And you can see the visibility kind of sucks. Like, like it really has to be... I mean, I know it's taking into account the, uh, you know, local observations throughout the entire area, I think, and, and coming up with a value. But a lot of times, you know, I'll fly someplace and uh, I know... <laughs> You know, like I'm flying in Southern California where I am, and the visibility is like beautiful. It's a totally crystal clear, and from my backyard, I can see a hundred miles to the mountain range over here. And then I'll go to the local airport in the sim, inject the same weather, and uh, the visibility looks like this. It's the only thing I don't like about this, and I know there's a new version coming out, and I know other people have complained about that too. So we'll see how uh we'll see how that goes we'll see if uh there's any improvement in that so and there's some nice terrain here what is this this is uh the those appalachian mountains yeah we're starting to get into this uh stuff right here that'd be pretty cool to see with the uh, ortho and forgive my geography, what river is this? I don't know what river this is. What's the river that flows through Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? I'm looking for a name here. I'm gonna zoom in all the way, <laughs> see if there's a name anywhere on here. Uh, nope, an island. You would think they'd have the name in the in the map someplace, right? They probably do, and we're just not going to see it as it's loading.
Come on. What? There's a dam. We'll have to do some more flying around here. Alright, let's zoom out. Get back over here. Uh, where does this river flow to? All the way down to um, Baltimore. We're right into the, uh, what is that, Puget Sound? No, that's. <laughs> I'm so bad at geography. I can't remember. Is it Puget Sound or what is that? Now, Puget Sound is. That's not it. Wait, what is it? I don't know what this is. I have no idea. Sorry. I'm an idiot. Go outside here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to remember to take that view when I drop my gear. Ge geography lesson here. Alright, let's see. There we go. I'll bring this over to the other screen. Alright, you've got Google Maps up here. Uh, let's see, where are we flying? We're flying over here somewhere. Pittsburgh. Where is... Where's this damn river? Here it is. Alright, what river is this? Please tell me. Oh, great. It's some crazy Indian name that I will not be able to pronounce. Which is funny because I'm actually from the East Coast. From New England, a Susquehanna River. Uh, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. But it flows into... What is this body of water called? My goodness. It's got little bays here. Yeah, Northeast River. Well, Google Maps is not very good for a geography lesson. Let's put it that way. can't even read that. It's sideways anyway. You'd think they'd have like, ah, this is what this is called, right? Let's see. So that's easier to see, maybe. That's kind of weird. Look at that. The way it colors, it's like uh, kind of hard to see. But we're here. Maryland, Virginia, what is that? Chesapeake Bay, my goodness, I'm such a retard. There it is. Puget Sound. Puget Sound's like on the west coast. <laughs> I hope. I'm a retard. Like seriously, I knew that. It's just I'm getting old and stupid. And then this is the Delaware Bay, gotcha. Alright, Delaware Bay, Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know, I've been over this bridge over here into Virginia a few times. I can't believe I couldn't have Chesapeake Bay. That, like, literally, I'm so stupid. I should probably not post that. I should edit that out. I won't, but... Alright. So, and that, whatever the heck that river was called, back there. How are we doing here? We got 27 minutes. That's a kind of nice terrain here. I'm definitely going to do some... Uh... Yeah, so that's Harrisburg back behind us, back there. So what's up here? 
Or is that still part of Harrisburg? But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do some ortho for the rest of the routes here. Because there's some interesting things to see here. That looks neat. I mean, I'm sure, obviously, once we get out of... Uh, once we get out of uh, Pennsylvania and into, you know, Ohio and stuff like that. Let's see what there is to see there. Probably gets pretty flat. Yeah. Well, we'll start. We're we're still going to be in this, so I'm going to do ortho for at least a portion of the flight. Then we get. Uh, I don't even know where we're going to go. So we flew from Connecticut over to Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Now we're flying right over here to Pennsylvania. Next hop will probably be someplace in Ohio. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe we'll take a little bit northern route, do a little loop, loop de loop. Probably just to keep it interesting, because I mean I don't know how interesting is that. Eh. Yeah, maybe we'll head up this way towards Cleveland or wherever we end up at. We're going to be, what, Johnstown? Or is it someplace over here? Anyway, we'll go, we'll probably head up towards the lakes here. Head over through Chicago. And then what else is there to see? We'll probably head down this way. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of a lot of planes we're going to be going through here, I think. But we'll make it interesting. And then we'll head out this way. And uh, not sure if we'll go to Colorado, maybe New Mexico. And eventually end up home in Southern California. He says where Google thinks I am. All right. Enough of that. Let's take a look at some of this scenery. Pop out of the plane. Take a look around. Interesting the way the uh, mountains are. I think they got kind of squished up this way, or something. Ripples. Back in the plane before we lose it. Alright, how much longer we got? We've got, uh... Distance, please. Well, 23 minutes. Distance over here, 65 miles to go. Looks like the clouds are closing in on us here. Let's take a look at the radar. So we don't seem to be getting any over here. We got really dark out there, huh? Um, yeah, we're someplace starting to get into this. Ooh, ooh. Weather's coming in. Look at that. The green blob. Right into our flight. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, the observations here. So, Johnstown currently reporting clear. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing that's going to change. Clear. What are these? These automated observations? Yeah. It, see, the problem with automated observations is they usually only go up to like 10, 12,000 feet, some of them 15. Um, so it may be clear <laughs> below 10,000 feet, but, uh, you know, we got rain showers moving in here. You got to go over to some of the uh, augmented observations like uh, this one here. 
right? And they've got overcast at 12,000. See, so that's why Johnstown may be reporting uh, clear, but um, it's actually overcast at 12,000, and that's what the observation, or that's what the forecast has. All right, so at least we're good at our altitude here. We know that. Altoona, Altoona, Altoonia, I don't know, I will suck at some of these names. Alright, let's get rid of that, let's just uh, double check in Avi tab, let's see where we're at. Yeah, there we are, coming up to Johnstown. Johnstown's right there, S-Town. I need to get a good view of the mountains without the engine noise. I was going to say, talking to the mic again with my mic off. I don't know how Captain Canada does it, but I got to stretch my legs and uh, I will be right back. I'm going to go get a bottle of water.
All right, guys. Got the K cup brewing my cup of coffee. It's done. Let's take a look. See how much farther we got to go here. Uh, forty-five miles. Really. All right. Gloomy scenery out here, although interesting looking. Something up ahead. Let's take a look. I wonder if that's uh, K A O O. Is that that uh, Al Altoona or whatever it was? But Johnstown coming up. We got a B O R there too. Let's go ahead and pull up the weather. Actually, we'll see what the weather is. KJST Johnstown. What do we got? Weather updated. Not sure if that's the most current, but yeah, that's pretty much what they were showing. Oh. See, now this observation is showing overcast 29,800, which is really weird. Broken 35,500. Okay. Um. And it doesn't give us anything else behind it. There's no remark, so I don't know where Avitab gets this. I don't know if it's pulling it from... I have no idea. I don't know how it works. I don't know how Avitab works. It's more realistic, but I can tell you for certain that observations don't go like that. This is somehow being derived somehow. 28 kilometers. I mean, I'm guessing maybe this is. Man, no, that's feet, so 28 kilometers. Anyway, winds are out of the south, 11 gusting, 18. So, they got an ATIS. 118.35. Let's see if we can tune that in. 118.35. Thirty-five, one eighteen, thirty-five, right? Oh, thirty-two, one eighteen, thirty-two, and of course we don't get it. One eighteen, thirty-two. All right, let's let's try that. John Murtha, Johnstown, Cambria, Co. Information Uniform, seventeen hundred Zulu weather. Wind one seven zero at one three. Visibility more than ten. Sky conditions twenty six thousand overcast. Temperature minus one, dew point minus six. Altimeter Burr. three zero zero three. Advise on initial three, zero, contact. Zero, have three. Uniform. Yikes. We're way off. We should have been uh, updating that as we went. And I didn't catch the sky condition, which I'm curious. John Murtha, Johnstown, Cambria, Co. Information Uniform. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind 170 at 13. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 26,000 overcast. Temperature minus 1. Dew point minus. All right, 26,000 overcast, but the time was off. Um, but then again, I'm screwing around with my time, so who the heck knows what time it is actually? I mean, it says it's 1703 sim time. Or is that real time? Yeah, this has got 22Z. 
Ay, ay, ay. I wish we just all had one time zone. Sam, curious, what is this? Uh, is that? Yeah, that's got to be that airport right there. And Johnstown is another 32 miles practically. It's got a little engine noise in the cockpit. Just a little bit. Pretty gloomy out there too. I'm gonna go ahead and hit our, uh, no, I'm not gonna hit that. We'll wait, <laughs> wait till we're a little closer. We're still, what, 30 miles out. There's some reflection down there on the water. There must be a sun someplace up there. Well, let's take a look at this. There's some other information here. So, field elevation is 2284. Um, so, add about 1200 to that, 1500 to that. That's uh, 30, let's just call it 23. Add 1000, 33. So, about 3500 feet for a regular sort of pattern altitude. And. Uh, we're not going to bother with any of this, but what do we got for runways here? I forgot what the winds, what, what were they reporting for winds? Probably out of the south. Let's listen to that again. John Murtha, Johnstown, Cambria Co. Information Uniform. 1800 Zulu weather. Wind 170 at 13. Visibility more than 10. All right, 170 at 13. Um, okay. So winds are out of 170. Winds are out of 170. So runway off. So we're going to be making a left left turn and coming into whatever runway we got. Let's take a look at these runways here. Uh, well, there's runway 15, 7000. It's a big one. I think that's what we're going to take. Runway 1, 5. Let's go back to our map here. Because we're coming up pretty quick here. 25 miles. I'm going to take a look at my other screen. Let me get rid of this. And let's take a look at the airport diagram. And I'll bring it up here. Alright, there we go. Uh, runway 1, 5. There we go. We're going to be coming in from over here. So we'll enter a base leg, make a left hand turn for runway 15. And let's see what else we got here. Let's see if we got any kind of approaches. Let me move that up a little bit. Alright, uh, we got an ILS to 3 3, RNAVs, we got a BOR 15. You are DME 15. Let's take a look at that one. So, Johnstown, we can tune in that. I mean, we're visual, but uh, we'll tune in Johnstown VOR because it looks like it's right at the field. Uh, 113 0. So, let's go over here to nav. Let's go 113 0. Flop that over. Uh, we're gonna go to heading hold. Close enough now. And we're gonna switch over to our CDI here. <coughs> and now we're gonna go change our course. Just hold it. Alright, there we go. I'm gonna hold it and go beyond it. Alright, so you can see we're kind of going right to it. And there it is, right there. Let's put in a few things over here that we could use, like DME, bearing one, bearing two. What else we got? Winds, everything else good. All right. 
I always forget to add those in. I wish it just came up defaulted, or there's a way to save your configuration. I'm sure there is in real life, but in the sim, not, not I don't know. Uh, there's a way of like saving it. And anyway, well, local time, uh, 14.07, because we changed our time there. Uh, but we got the airport in sight. Let's go ahead and uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna change our bearing here uh, to one five, and our barometer, our bearing. I forgot what the exact heading was, but general, just to get it, you know, alignment on the runway kind of thing. We're flying visually. All right, let's go ahead and hit all our lights here. Let's get lit up like a Christmas tree. Let's go outside and take a look at do a flyby. And, um, yeah, we're going to change our heading because this runway, we're going to come in over here. So we're going to kind of go off to the side here a little bit. So we can enter a, uh, well, kind of a base leg. Come right over here and then turn inbound for 1 to 5. We're actually kind of entering almost like a 45 degree downwind, I guess. I guess we can do that. What the heck? We're almost like 45 degrees off anyway. Ah, oh, that coffee's good. I just picked up, like the other day, I picked up one of those uh, um, Krieger, Kruger. K cup coffee makers. Um, so I am enjoying making tea and coffee with it. See this one this is showing a VOR right there, but there's a VOR at the airfield. I'm gonna take a look at the uh, Take a look at the actual sectional chart here. Show you what I'm like. It's covered in radar here, so let's get rid of that. Uh, let's see, radar. Let's get rid of radar. There we go. All right, now we can zoom in here. We can actually see something. So yeah, so we've got the Mirtha Johnstown VOR right at the airport, and then the other one that it was showing was this one here. Is that? Let me zoom out a little bit more. That is this one here, Revlock. B O R D M E. Oh. All right, but we're going here. Cool. Get rid of that. And I don't want to hear this song. Nope, not that one either. Wow, that's like the... Yeah, this one's happy. Happy song. We're coming into our approach here. Co-pilot is barking behind me. Let's take a look out here. There's our airport. So 3,500 is what we said. We got to drop down here. So let's kill the autopilot. Off you go. Bring the power back. Let's drop down. We got to go down 3,000 feet here. This is an interesting terrain here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to load uh, Ortho for departure out of uh, Johnstown here. But look at that, and we're getting some turbulence now. Lovely. I'm 
going to double check. I want to see if this is still injecting. Yep, it is. As long as it says custom METAR file. And I'm going to take a look at my uh, FS Global Real Weather. Uh, yep, that seems to still be working. All right. Cool. So we've actually got a little bit of turbulence finally. All right, let's power all the way back. Come inbound to the airport here. We'll, we'll do a regular pattern entry. So maybe that uh, setting there definitely had a had an increase on the amount of turbulence, but even it's not that much. I mean, literally, this is just like I wouldn't even call this turbulence, other than a little chop, a little everyday chop kind of thing. All right, what are we coming through? Five thousand feet, still high. We'll go right for the airport. Kind of, maybe. We got a little. We got a definitely good crosswind here too. We got that uh, down here. Twenty-one knots. Um, so this should be interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the uh, the engine sound just a little bit so we can hear uh, hear the engine. I like to, I like to hear the engine sound so that uh, you know I can judge where my power setting is. All right, let's go ahead and drop the gear. Don't forget our view. This might be loud, sorry. Nice. There we go, gear down. And visually confirmed. Let's go hit our first notch of flaps here. That's gonna slow us down quite a bit. And we're at 3,800 feet. It's really blowing us across. Look at that crosswind. Is is we're literally going sideways. It's actually going to blow us into the uh, the base leg here. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn. There's 36, I think, 3,500 feet. We're going to go ahead and let's power up a little bit here. I'm going to maybe regret having to put that uh, turbulence in, huh? I might just screw this one up. Alright, and you can see this is why I like to, just as a reference right there, it's got a nice, uh, we know exactly where the runway heading is. My goodness, the co-pilot scared in the back seat. Alright, we're kind of kind of on downwind here. Alright, flaps are down one notch, gears down, three green, landing lights are on. We'll come around this little ravine right here. Before we get blown all the way to Canada. About 3,300 feet. Let's try holding right there for now. And kind of eyeballing it here. Go ahead and turn down the music for uh, the approach here. All right, let's go full flaps. Turn to final. Nose and over a little bit. that power back a bit. Let's get down to uh, down to our glide slope. And definitely got a headwind right out of here so we're gonna have a little bit of a crosswind coming in. So uh, it might look a little funky. <laughs> might look like I'm, uh, I'm a little bit off but uh, I'm trying to correct for that uh, that crosswind. It's pretty strong. All right, there's our, uh, there's our Bassy lights. All right, flaps are down. We 
We're getting a little slow, although we're on the approach here. And we're on the uh, glide slope. We just got a, a decent headwind there. 16 knots, it looks like. So our rate of descent is, uh, is almost nil. And we got 7,000 feet, so plenty of room here. Let's try to... We're not going to try to drop it down right there at the end of the runway. We're a little bit high. We're gonna keep popping up. Those winds are kind of gusty. Right, try to get us down to about 80. And oh, let's see if we can butter this one. Oh, 18 feet per minute. Not bad for uh, a rather bumpy approach. All right, flaps up. Now let's get slowed up here and take a look around. Let's see where we're going. Oh, there's a VOR. Let's see what there is to see in Johnstown. I think we're going to be taxiing to the left here. And... Um, we'll say they cleared us to taxi on the uh, the runway right here. Wow, look at that windsock. <laughs> it's like standing out straight. Alright, we'll taxi over here with the quartering, or kind of a tailwind there. I think we'll park over here on the, uh, let's see. Left or right? Uh, I think, I think right here. Yep, this looks good. We got a private hangar right here. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button and uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll do a replay over here of that uh, landing just because it was a little bit interesting. Um, and uh, hit the uh, hit the bell button. You'll get notified when I post new videos. We'll continue our little hop across the country here in the DA uh, 62. Like I said, not even going to know where I'm going to go. Give me a suggestion. Let me know where you think I should go from here. Heading westbound out of uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. There we go. We'll flip her around. All right, let's hit the parking brake and let's jump out for a replay. Let's see where we're at. That looks pretty cool. I think I want to do that one. All right, we'll do a couple replays here. Hopefully that's not too loud. Bring the volume down there. That was a bumpy approach. It got really smooth right at the runway though. And speed it up a little bit. That headwind was something else. And that's what uh, 18 feet per minute looks like. Let's back her up here. How about a uh, flyby over the runway here? And I 
we went a little bit long, but it was worth it for 18 at 18 foot per minute. A little bit of a crosswind there. Back her up again. Watch the tower view. Alright, we'll call it a day. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And uh, follow along as we head west. Till next time guys, take care.